Meet Arnold. <laughs> Seems like you played for a little too long today, Arnie. The only sensible solution is to go to bed. Good night, Arnold. Ooh. Spending the whole day playing video games won't go unnoticed. After such excitement, something terrible can happen. For example, sleep paralysis. REM sleep is a state in which the body is immobilized. With sleep paralysis, your brain wakes up, but your muscles stay frozen. So you can see and hear, but you can't move. During these moments, hallucinations start to occur, and it feels like a demon is sitting on you. But this isn't for long. What's wrong, Arnie? Are you afraid to sleep in the dark? About 10% of people on Earth suffer from nyctophobia, the fear of darkness. Scientists believe that this trait is genetically inherited. Our ancestors were afraid of being eaten by nocturnal predators, and so our imagination paints the most terrible pictures in the dark. Ooh, it looks like there's someone behind that window. Ha! Huh. In the world ranking of candy-ass scaredy pants, you, Arnold, get first place. All fear is formed in the amygdala of the brain. A feeling of fear is formed in this little tiny one and a half centimeter sack. There were actual cases when people's amygdala was destroyed due to a disease called Erbach White. This permanently disables the fear response. But this most definitely doesn't apply to you, Arnold. You're afraid of everything, even your own shadow. Okay, okay, I'll turn on the light, just so you know that nobody's here. But sleeping with the lights on is a bad idea, too. It suppresses the amount of melatonin produced during sleep, which can lead to excess weight. Are you going to sleep? Did you know you're participating in a secret experiment to control dreams? Our brain is a supercomputer that works even when we sleep. When you run in a dream, the areas responsible for movement are also active. The same is true with visual images and the visual cortex. These areas are active during real events, which is why dreams feel like reality. But it's just a dream, Arnie. Reality is different. It can be harsh. What's going on? Unfortunately, Arnold, the experiment is not going as planned. Now it's not a dream. It's a nightmare. Being eaten by a homeless dude is not the nicest death, even in a dream. Oh, you woke up. Or did you? In a dream, time passes differently. Due to your slower heartbeat, your body uses less energy, but your brain works at the same speed. Perception of time also depends on the type of dream. You can live a lifetime in a dream, but in reality, only a few minutes will have passed. Hmm, why is everything so weird? Maybe Tagai can tell you. Ah, I see, you're in a lucid dream. This is a state when the body is asleep, but the psyche isn't. You can achieve lucid dreaming through long training and discipline, or you can use psilocybin. Athletes use lucid dreams to practice movements without getting injuries, and they can even be used to cure phobias. Have you ever had a lucid dream? Tell us in the comments. Exiting a lucid dream is more difficult than entering it. Hey, there's an idea. In a dream, you can do anything. And in real life, nothing will happen. Maybe this is how you can live the life you've always dreamed of, Arnie. Although it's pretty unlikely. What the jumping Jiminy is this place? Looks like a college dormitory at not the best university. Wow, Arnold. Looks like you could be a superstar in a new reality series. How on earth did they get a file on all of you guys? Whoopsie daisy, I guess they got you here by mistake. What do they want from all of you? Uh-oh, I don't like this at all. Arnold, haven't you been able to sleep? A day without sleep leads to headaches. Your hearing becomes noisy and difficult. And your memory becomes impaired. <gasps> believe that on average, a person can endure no more than five days without sleep. That's when the real oh. test begins. Optical and auditory begin to appear. 
The first to set a no-sleep world record was 17-year-old Randy Gardner, who stayed up for 11 days. But this was later beaten by Robert McDonald, who stayed awake for 19 days. But the representatives of the Guinness Book didn't confirm it. And conducting such kind of experiments on yourself is quite dangerous for your health. You're the only one left, Arnie, old pal. I'm reminded of one legend about Soviet scientists. They put five people in a room for 15 days with a stimulant gas that kept them all awake. And here he is, our hero of the day. A strong blow to the head has woken up Jacob again, Arnie's other personality, or in scientific terms, his alter ego. It's called disassociative identity disorder. With this disease, power over the body of the patient is completely captured by another personality. The cause of the disorder may be trauma during childhood. The child blocks off memories of bad events and starts to consider himself someone else. Jacob, unlike Tim and Arnold, doesn't suffer from multiple complexes. He's fearless and sexy, and he'll stop at nothing. Even somebody as petulant as Tagai is intrigued. But there is one thing. Jacob can only speak Dumi, which is a language common to only Eastern Nepal. The alter ego often differs from one's main personality in the language of communication, gender, age, nationality, and even IQ. And in especially exotic cases, the alter ego can be an animal or even a religious figure. The maximum number of alter egos in one person was identified in an American criminal named Billy Milligan, who had 24 different full-fledged personalities. Billy was acquitted in court as crimes he committed were actually committed by one of his alter egos, unbeknownst to Billy himself. Arnold, just look at what you've done. It seems now you think you're a psycho and you need to be treated. But split personality is not schizophrenia, and there's simply no cure. What's that? An SMS from Tagai. She wants you to come to her now. Inside Arnold, there can be only one. So, they won't give you ice cream if you don't have money. <gasps> hmm, maybe you should try working. I'm impressed, Arnold. You found a job. But do you even know what a polygraph examiner is? Arnold, I can see that you're lying. It's easy to tell from your physiological reaction. But other people can better control their emotions. A polygraph examiner is someone who can tell if you're lying or telling the truth using a lie detector. We have something called the sympathetic nervous system. And if something goes wrong, it prepares us to fight. It increases your pulse rate, induces sweating, and raises your blood pressure. When we lie, and we know that we're lying, this is also a threatening situation. Arnold, didn't anyone tell you? In order to work as a polygraph examiner, first, you gotta get tested yourself. Don't worry, buddy, it's a simple procedure. You've got nothing to hide. Or do you? There are a few ways to cheat a lie detector. For example, clenching your sphincter. This activates the nervous system and raises blood pressure so the readings won't be accurate. Start training, Arnie. Just don't overdo it. Congratulations, Arnold. You're now a polygraph examiner. Come on, you don't remember how to connect all the wires. So, you think you can detect lies better than a polygraph? Do you know how often a person can guess a lie correctly? 50% of the time, which is exactly the same as random guessing. And this is even when people are absolutely sure that they're right. People who lie a lot experience a 22% increase in white matter in the brain. However, their gray matter, that is neurons, decreased by 14%. So in that case, then cannibals might be the best at figuring out whether you're a liar or not. <laughs> Mythomania is a disorder that compels a person to lie. Moreover, a person with this disorder believes their own lies. What you reading? Hmm. 
One, he might have a scary mask on his face. Uh, Arnie, are you sure you really want to be reading this in a secluded park? The second sign of a maniac is a knife or other weapon in their hands. Are you sure you really want to know the third sign? The maniac has huge silicone… wait, that's not it. He always attacks without warning! Fight for your life, Arnold! Try somehow to divert the maniac's attention and slip away. Never mind. You should run to a public place and get people's attention. Why is no one responding? Psychologists advise shouting fire instead of help. This way, people will notice you faster. Sure, calling the police is a great idea. Now, 48 hours after your death, they'll really definitely start looking for you. Just kidding. Wait until they arrive. Also, gym time is over. Looks like you were able to get away. But don't rush to rejoice just yet. Some maniacs hunt their victims for months and can predict exactly where they'll go next. By the way, dark alleys are a bad place to try and hide. It looks like nothing is gonna help you. Except, well, maybe that. Ingratiate yourself with the maniac. Motives of maniacs can be different. Some want power, others suffer from delusions, and some consider themselves purifiers of society. But absolutely all of them are lonely and deeply hurt people. If you treat the maniac well, then there's a chance you might survive. Yes, you'll have to put up with a few really scary things and listen to his crazy ideas. But someday it will end. The main thing is, never show your true emotions. Remember, salvation will come. Then it remains only to be explained to the police why the maniac considers you his best friend. You've been sent to a place from which nobody has ever escaped. Guantanamo Bay Prison. Arnold, didn't you hear me? Nobody has ever managed to escape from here. They don't even try, because it's impossible. And if anyone even dares to try to escape, he'll have to find a way to get through 20 centimeter thick metal doors down an endless maze of corridors with surveillance cameras, fight off vicious guard dogs, get over super high voltage, five meter tall electric fences, through razor-sharp concertina wire and past dozens of guards in every sector. At the moment, 40 of the most dangerous criminals in the world are held at this prison. And you, my friend Arnold, are on the list. Congratulations! Nevertheless, you're not allowed to talk to any of them. After all, every prisoner is in strict solitary confinement 24 hours a day. Speaking of time, it's time to have lunch! Let's see what's on the menu for today. All right, what do we have here? They only have one special prison dish, something called Nutriloaf. Nutriloaf is a prison punishment food made from leftovers without the slightest hint of salt or spices. <laughs> Good Lord, that makes me want to barf. I have no idea how you're going to eat it, Arnold. So, you're not gonna eat it. You decided to go on a hunger strike as a sign of protest. Oh, and look, how cute. You made a little dolly friend out of bread to keep you company. Well done, Arnold. But I think you overreacted about the food. I completely forgot to tell you, but Guantanamo Bay is not a place where human rights are given a whole lot of thought. So, if someone goes on a hunger strike, for example, he's force-fed with a tube that's pushed up one of his nostrils. Okay, so this plan doesn't always work. But don't think for a minute that this is over. A whole smorgasbord of tortures are waiting for you. Water, cold, music, and electric torture are all being practiced in Guantanamo. And the cherry on top is sleep deprivation. After just a few days of such torture, your brain and muscle functions weaken, your thinking processes spin, and your will can now easily be broken. After a week, 
Due to lack of sleep, you'll start hallucinating. As a result of which, Arnold. What the bejeebers is that? Wow, your bread friend came to rescue you. Arnold, you're free. The only question is, where did a walking bread man get a high-powered laser weapon? Eh, as I already told you, Arnold, you're bescrewed, buddy. Don't worry, Arnold. They'll let you go if you answer correctly. So, guess what's in the picture? Wrong! And on this one. No! Get it together, man! Such experiments were carried out in the 1950s in the USA. Their goal was to develop paranormal abilities in soldiers in order to gain an advantage in the Cold War. The test subjects were given LSD, since LSD significantly increases the activity of neural connections. Arnold, pull yourself together already. Even a rat learns faster than that. Well, true, this ain't no ordinary rat. He has a chip in his brain. Scientists proved the possibility of transmitting nerve impulses from a distance back in 2013. The rats were in different cities, but they acted together, thanks to electrodes implanted in their brains and the internet. It looks like Elon Musk is going to try all the different ways to develop telepathy on you at the same time. Arnold, stop! You haven't mastered your new skills yet, buddy. Mind reading has many benefits. Now, people can't hide anything from you. But I have to warn you, you won't like everything they think about. The pros in a relationship, you can immediately know if your partner really loves you or not. You can understand the language of animals and you can find your perfect match. But what if all people could read each other's minds? An ideal world without lies or falsehood. Or maybe not. Hey, mister, don't be offended if he thought your nose is too pimply. Gosh darn it, this is a disaster. No, Arnie, stop. Don't even think about it. Get up, lazy butt. I have something for you, Arnold. You now have just 24 hours to live. I think you should Google what to do in such a situation. Yeah. First, clear your browser history. And here are the top three answers to this burning question. How would you spend the last day of your life with loved ones? I think for you, Arnold, this probably ain't the right answer. The second option is to gorge yourself on junk food. Well, you already do that every day. And finally, number three, spend the day at the ocean with a loved one. Ooh, it just got interesting. Arnold, are you really gonna do what you've been dreaming of all your life? Whoopsie daisy, somebody ran out of gas and money. money. Great idea! You can get a loan and really live it up on your last day. Get the maximum. You'll feel like the richest dude on the planet. Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, makes enough money to buy a new Tesla Model S every 50 seconds. You're rich now, Arnold. You can rent your own plane and fly anywhere you want. What are you up to? Wow, you're gonna take Tagaya from her boyfriend and take her on a trip with you. Arnold, you're my hero. Ah, if only we could turn back time and make this moment really last. What if I told you it's possible to keep the day from ending? You need to overtake the sun. To do this, we gotta fly west along the equator at a speed of 1,667 kilometers per hour. If you can fly at that speed, the day will never end. Regrettably, this won't affect your lifetimer in the slightest. It's your last few seconds, Arnold. Do it! 
Arnold, you're alive! Ah, I see. According to the contract you signed, you have no right to die until you pay off the loan. Bye-bye, <laughs> Arnold. What's that? Yeah, looks like everything's getting weird and buggy. <laughs> Distinguishing virtual reality from reality is becoming more and more difficult every day. Ooh. Ooh, deja vu. Calm down, you paranoid pinhead. Stray animals often break into houses to find food. Or maybe the world around you is a simulation. Relax, buddy, it's an optical illusion. If you change your viewing angle, everything falls into place. But after all, truth be told, everything you see really is just a figment of your brain's imagination. Light entering your retina is converted into an impulse that transmits information to the visual image processing system. From there, the signal goes to your brain and you see what you see. And when, woo, woo, what a beauty. Hmm, another glitch or a consequence of popular trends in mass markets. Such synchronicity can make you think you're losing your mind. Yes, Arnold, you're right. This definitely needs to be recorded. But take your phone out of your pocket slowly and carefully, buddy. Or the police might think that you're reaching for a weapon. This is how the illusion works. The reticular formation in your brainstem becomes excited. Hey, where are you going, you coward? Arnold, who's this? No, 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 don't even think about it. This is not the Matrix. That's a bad idea, Arnold. Almost as bad as making a sequel to the legendary trilogy. Meet Arnold is a hallucination, and the effects are now 300 times stronger. And Arnold's brain turns into goo. In fact, just like him, this requires serious medical intervention. What the heck? Am I, am I glitching now too? You know that Googling your symptoms is a really bad idea. Oh, look. Hmm. Depressed mood, lack of self-confidence, fatigue. Hmm, maybe you really do have depression. Perhaps you should make an appointment with a psychiatrist. It's really important not to self-diagnose and self-medicate. So don't... Huh? <laughs> Yeah. Wow, so many different antidepressants. Something tells me you're not interested in reading the directions either, are you, buddy? All right, so you have two packs of Prozac, 75 tablets of Celexa, five packs of Zoloft, half a jar of Lexapro, and a whole lot of sedative syrups of different varieties and colors. Not that this will necessarily cure your depression, but once you start collecting <laughs> medicines, it's hard to stop. The only thing that really concerns me is the tricyclic antidepressant. But if I know you, I know that sooner or later you'll start using that garbage too. Oh, here we go again. Let's see what you took this time. MAO inhibitors can lead to delirium tremens, hence your hallucinations. Dizziness, tremors, seizures, all are caused by serotonin reuptake inhibitors. The euphoria and pleasure you're experiencing come from tricyclic antidepressants. By the way, did you notice that you haven't eaten in eight hours? Models sometimes take antidepressants to not feel hungry, and dreams under antidepressants appear closer and more tangible. So, Arnie, was it all a dream or was it real? What now? You don't want to self-medicate anymore. Wait, Arnold, what are you doing? You can't flush the pills down the toilet. You ignoramus. Due to antidepressants getting into the sewers, fish have become more aggressive. You remember that Toby is a piranha, right? Due to fluoxetine getting into the water, fish are losing their individuality, and the effect is preserved for generations to come. Dang it, Arnold, you better take him to the vet. Did you already forget what happens when you diagnose and prescribe treatment yourself? Hmm. The piranhas seem to have acquired a taste for human flesh. Congratulations, you have a chance to be the first person to get cloned. Get in the machine, Arnold. What could possibly go wrong? Now, 
let's do a little testing. Hmm, what's this? The cloning didn't work as I expected. Your brain is split in two with each of you having just one of the hemispheres. Blimey! The corpus callosum connects the hemispheres of the brain and consists of 200 to 250 million nerve fibers, each several centimeters long. If your grandma were to knit them into a thread, she could wrap it around the earth three times. That's amazing. Let's test your cognitive abilities. Well done, left-brained Arnold. Right Brain Arnold, what are you doing? Yep, yep, yep. Ah, right, the left hemisphere is responsible for language. The left hemisphere controls the right side of the body, and the right hemisphere controls the left. So if you remove the corpus callosum, as is done in severe cases of epilepsy, the person will initially confuse their left and right limbs. Let's get everything back to how it was. Get in the machine, Arnolds. Yes, one at a time. Don't push. We won't start without both of you anyway. Be careful. Hmm, seems to be jammed. Hang on a sec, buddy. Most areas of the brain in the two hemispheres are duplicated. Therefore, if one hemisphere is removed, or if a person is born with only one, the other hemisphere can compensate for the lost one's function, and the person can lead a totally normal life. So. How do you feel, Arnie? Hmm, is that the other Arnold's finger? <laughs> the population of Earth has reached its maximum, and people are forced to leave the planet. And that's what happens when you hit the snooze button ten times in a row. You can oversleep the general evacuation of the whole planet. Come on, Arnold. Don't go <laughs> rushing to get your panties all in a twist. People left a bunch of really cool stuff behind. What are you gonna do first? Seriously? A really huge burger? But what about cool cars and the opportunity to live in Trump's apartment? Do something cool! Wow, Arnie, you are a true hero. Releasing all the animals from the zoo, it's damn noble. Come on, folks, leave a like for this. But what about pets? There are 500 million cats and just as many dogs on Earth. And once they're free, they become prey to predators. But let's not talk about sad things when the whole dang planet is open for business. Yeah, the coolest roller coaster. The car accelerates to 206 kilometers an hour hour and drops from a height of 127 meters. Before, Arnold, they didn't let you in here because of your height, but now it's no problem. Hmm, somehow it doesn't look like it's all that fun. Without people, electricity will gradually disappear. Lithium batteries self-discharge after seven years, and you can forget about solar energy after about 20 years when the last panel fails. And nuclear power plants in a few decades will stop forever without human service. Arnold, get out of there! If you get injured, you won't be able to call 911. This time, you're in luck. As you can see, the problem with garbage ain't going nowhere. Plastic and glass will decompose only after 700 to more than a thousand years. So, you're saving innocent souls, aren't you? Be careful not to get yourself into trouble. Phew! Seems like you dodged a bullet there. Or not. I'm guessing you're gonna be stuck here for a while. And you'll have to survive without any food at all. Try to imagine your Angus Barbieri, a man who didn't eat anything for over a year. Shocking doctors. He lived a normal life, going to the toilet just once every 40 days. At the end of his fast, he weighed 180 pounds having lost 275 pounds. After 12 hours of fasting, you turn pale and weak, but a fat person feels better because they have fat tissue reserves. At this time, dizziness sets in, and an unpleasant smell comes from the mouth. Oh, Arnold, there's water here. See, Arnie, always look on the bright side of life. Fasting can serve good purposes. Gandhi fasted for three weeks in protest against the caste system in India. Christian Bale lost 66 pounds for his role in The Machinist. And medieval monks fasted to hear the voice of God. Like if you wouldn't last a single day. 
Unlike a person's mind, on the fourth day, the body accepts hunger as a given. During this time, a sharp loss of weight is observed, along with weakness. The body always needs food, so when it's not there, it has to use fat and muscle tissue. This releases ketones, which are extremely harmful to the body. Headaches and weakness develop, and in the worst cases, there's vomiting with gastric juice, confusion, and even death.